Hello there friends and welcome to an update on the volcanic activity going on at Kilauea on the big island of Hawaii. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today is Tuesday, September 2nd and we have the initiation of episode 32. So episode 32 began today about 6.35 a.m. local time. You can see the fountaining going on there on the webcam, mainly from this north vent a little bit coming out of this sort of intermediate intermediate vent and then a small amount from the south vent but the lion's share of the lava is being thrust out of the north vent you can also see it's coming out at an inclined angle um, what we call an inclined fountain uh, some people have called it a lava bow which is kind of more fun term i suppose but um, this is presumably due to some blocked material around the vent so it's built up enough material on that south side that it's directing uh, much of that lava off to the north or northeast there. Um, so you can see the activity going on right now at Kilauea. And again, episode 32 of this sequence that began back on December 23rd. I want to show you a couple of the webcam images here in a second. Uh, let's go back in time though and, and just let's go back to when this thing initiated uh, this morning. So if we go back a few hours, you can see about four hours ago, about 6.23 a.m., um, just low-level gas pistoning. This is how a lot of these eruptions have begun with this um, very low-level amount of kind of lava doming and low-level fountaining. And then once, you know, you get a little bit more of that gas arising into the system, it's able to jet out uh, higher eruption amounts of lava in the system. And that's where we see the fountaining go quite a bit higher so kind of just skipping along here so here's basically where it starts to ramp up this is 634 this morning you can see that substantially more than just a few minutes prior here at 626 if we move forward here again here's 636 a.m you can see the lava coming out of the, the vent here and then just a really a river of lava here going out to fill uh, the crater floor and then as that increased of course they had to zoom the camera out because the fountains got higher and higher so they zoomed out to capture the whole image. And again, this has been going on for a few hours, likely to continue for a few more hours and then before it starts to die down a little bit. You can see also that uh, earlier there was no activity from the south vent or that intermediate vent. So we'll see if we can capture when those start to kick up. Here we are about 9.30 in the morning local time, 9.45. They are kind of zoomed in, but about around 10 o'clock, nothing going on there. And let's see if we can see. Yeah, so they, they're kind of zoomed in to the main vent here. But you can see in the bottom left corner, if you guys can pick that out, there's down by the USGS logo, there's nothing coming in there. And this was as of 10.06. But if we move forward just to Skosh, you can start to see some lava popping up uh, on the image there. So it looks like sometime... Um, just after 10 o'clock we are at 1007 and just kind of skipping forward a little bit to see if we can exactly pinpoint yeah now you can see just a small stream of lava so now those other vents have begun it's about 10 10 and then again moving forward they zoom out so they can capture all the vents in action there so that's the view from the v3 camera this is the one looking more or less to the north let's check out the view from the east, so this is looking more or less due west across the uh, the crater here. You can see the fountaining there. You can still see some of those other vents here just off to the left. Uh, and then even some degassing going on up here on the slope, all that brown materials, all the tephra that's fallen. You can actually see that the wind must have changed direction a little bit too, because the, uh, the fountains are directed to the northeast. Normally with trade winds, we would expect that tephra to get blown back over this way, but we're not seeing that. So we have pretty calm winds right now, or maybe even a little bit of uh, wind out of the south or southwest. Let's go back and see if uh, that was substantially different. Yeah, here you can see it's almost like um, rising straight up. So really uh, super calm conditions, perhaps at that point, just as we kind of roll back a little bit here, a few hours or so. So maybe some variable winds going on there around the summit region. And then the V1 camera, what I thought, I've got this one actually paused, what I found interesting here, and this was just um, not that long ago, so about 10, 16 local time. Well, what you'll see here, because this camera is the closest of the three to the vent, 
is because that wind was kind of stagnating and the trade winds weren't kicking as hard is some of the tephra was quite close to the camera and you'll see these black pieces kind of skipping around in front of the camera. So if you look closely over here, you can see these little black specks of tephra uh, landing here on this bench, but also just kind of passing in front of the, right in front of the camera view there. We'll let that play for a few seconds. Uh, maybe skip through that one a little bit. I think it cleared up and the wind did shift around because I think later it wasn't happening quite as frequently. Let's just go to the live view now and see what that looks like. Yeah, so now you can see it's it's largely not happening, at least as much as it was earlier. Maybe a little bit. There's a little bit still going on there, I guess, on the right side. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of what's going on with Kilauea, just this eruption today, episode 32. And I think the last one, last time I did an update was for episode 30. And so I thought we'd look at not just this eruption, but also episode 31, which took place a few days ago as well again these inclined vents these would actually be going a lot higher uh, but they're a little bit directed so these aren't not quite vertical vents they're a little bit blocked around that conduit and so that's why they're actually you know the fountains are actually shooting out and across uh, the crater floor there so there's our great views there from the usgs pretty spectacular uh, let's go ahead and check out the latest from the USGS update. First, here's our map, our most updated map. So again, there's the north vent there, the northernmost of these three dots, that intermediate vent that opened up a few episodes ago, and then the south vent here. Remember back at episode 30, we also had a small fissure that erupt that broke open along the crater wall. That's shown here along this southern edge of the, the crater wall right here. Uh, so a nice little map there that kind of summarizes where everything's at. They also have some statistics down here at the bottom that just lets you kind of know what's just through episode 31 for these 31 episodes, not counting the one that started today. Average lava elevation, the thickness of the lava, the thickest it is is about 262 feet or 80 meters. So that's a, a substantial amount of lava that's accumulated on the crater floor, the area, and then the volume. So we're looking at about almost 39 billion gallons or 147 million, <clears throat> excuse me, cubic meters of lava that's erupted here since uh, December 23rd of last year. Pretty spectacular. Um, the latest Kilauea update from the USGS, again, it began about 635. Um, the North Vent Dome transitioned into taller fountains, which have since become inclined at about 45 degrees northeast. Similar to, but less inclined than those on episode 31. Current fountains are about uh, 500 feet in high and are arcing an equivalent distance into the Halima'uma'u crater. So the, they would be going a lot higher if they were vertically directed, but they're at that inclined angle. Um, yeah, past episodes have been much higher and wind is obviously, you know, and gases are, are primary concern there. So that's the, sort of the lion's share of the the update so far, looking at a couple images from the recent eruptions, they've got some nice field work images here. I think the ones that were maybe the most compelling or interesting of the ones I looked at. Here's one from episode 31 showing that, similar to what we see with episode 32 today with that uh, inclined fountain shooting the, the lava out at an angle and across the crater floor. Um, I guess this is a similar one here. Yeah, similar photo. In this image here, um, and then this was kind of neat here. I was, first I was like, "What? What the heck is this thing about?" But this is actually a close-up view of tiny volcanic glass fragments on a leather glove. So it just kind of shows you the the size and the nature of these very fine uh, ash particles that are erupting along with the, the fountaining that's going on there. So that's a leather glove for background, and then some of these small basaltic glass fragments particles on top of that glove. Uh, and then looking at, this is just showing, this is back to episode 31, but you'll see kind of how similar it is here with the fountaining there. This is just a compilation video with a couple things in it. So there's those inclined fountains, uh, some geologists getting some of the data there, a little close-up view of the fountaining that was taking place at episode 31. And then again, just all that lava accumulating and then just pouring out across the crater floor. So these are all available on the USGS website, a great way to kind of catch up. You know, if you miss one of these episodes, you can go back and see what videos and images they've collected during that time. So some close-ups of the 
lava channel coming out of the vents in the flow area. There's the lava channels heading out across the crater floor. Here they are collecting from their bucket some tephra samples, so some of that airborne material that falls into the bucket. They try to collect that between each episode and then analyze that. Look at the chemistry. Yeah, heading out for the day, some nighttime images. Just kind of skipping through here a little bit. Helicopter work, lava samples, all sorts of good stuff there. So again, good stuff from the USGS. And then finally, to wrap up this update, let's look at the latest monitoring data. Um, so we'll start with uh, earthquakes. And earthquakes, as we've talked about in these past updates, earthquakes are now not a big indicator of anything in terms of eruptions because we have these clear conduits that the magma is taking to get to the surface. So earthquake counts have been pretty low, anywhere from you know 10 to 40 or so earthquakes per day, which is a pretty low amount for uh, this area. So again, the conduit is open, it's established, and so we're not seeing a lot of rock breaking under pressure as the magma comes up towards the surface. Um, so there's the earthquake data. Um, let's go to this one for the GPS data, the tilt data. So here is the tilt meter, blue line. So this is um, just the past few hours, looks like six hours or so. So you can see inflation steadily in accumulating. And then once the eruption began and the fountaining began in earnest there again at like 6.35 a.m., you can see the deflationary trend there in the blue line. Uh, same graph here, but with more stretched out on the time scale here. So each vertical line here is a day. So here's August 27th, 28th, 29th, all the way up to today, September 2nd. So you can see that inflationary signal, tilt meter showing the inflation uh, as magma is accumulating in the subsurface, causing the, the tilt to increase. And then right at just over four micro radians of tilt is when the initiation of the eruption starts. And then that begins to drop there. And then here we are looking at the past month. So here's episode 32 that we, has just begun here. And then this is looking back at episode 31 that took place around August 22nd to 23rd, about a week or a little more than a week ago. Looking at the past three months, you can see how cyclical um, this pattern has been. Not perfectly. There's a little bit more distance between eruptions, especially over the last few eruptions. Um, early on, going back into June, you could see that the eruptions were spaced out a little more tightly in terms of days between eruptions, but they seem to be a little bit more spaced out over here on this part of the graph. Um, so I think that's it for the monitoring data. Yeah, we kind of walked through that information there. So we'll keep you updated if anything uh, changes. Of course, I mean, I think the big question looking at these 32 episodes at Kilauea is just, you know, how long will this go on? How long will this be sustained? Will we see um, a change in the behavior of the volcano? Will we see a change in the location of these eruptions? Um, is the magma supply going to stay constant or is it going to change a little bit? These are all questions that uh, we'll just kind of have to wait and see and settle in for. But for now, you can check out uh, these live feeds from the USGS and pull these up and Watch them on your own device. It has a nice little background and such. You actually see some of the little shards of glass and ash flying around here in front of the image every now and then. So kind of with this, the, the winds not really being strong right now and kind of swirling around the caldera area, we're, we're getting bits of ash and tephra and glass kind of swirling around in front of some of these camera images. But spectacular eruption, um, always a, a pleasure and a treat. So thanks for your support of the channel. We'll check you out next time when we have another eruption or two. And that's all. So take care.